The quintessential quintuplets, the code Tobu no Hanayome, quintuplet Bry, seriously, how many names does this name have, gosh. Anyways, this anime is one of the most hype anime pre-release, along with Mob Psycho, uh, Kaguya-sama, The Promised Neverland and many more. I watched some of the hype anime and they were still airing and the other man anime I like is Kaguya-sama, I left it till it has finished airing. The quintessential quintuplets is one of them. So now, first thoughts. After watching the first episode, I already came to a general conclusion of what anime will potentially be like. My first impression was that this is a generic harem anime with, of course, pretty girls that make perfect waifus, anti-social male protagonists, and the pretty girls all having different personalities but have common goal, which leads to them to meet and acquaint themselves with the male protagonist. The first episode shows some insights to our characters and an introduction of them meeting each other along with information of their backgrounds and personalities. Like many other animes, the first episode of the anime used the teaser approach where we get a glance of the future of the main character and the episode continues with whatever it's about. I have no problem with this kind of introduction and complaint. Generosity, in my opinion, is never bad. Nothing has to original to be good, but of course being original would definitely improve first impressions. With that said, episode 1 introduced the male protagonist Yasugi Futaro being an underprivileged antisocial and dense character, pretty generic if you ask me. Then he meets our first female protagonist, Itsuki Nanako, whom had their first faithful encounter and well, of course, where Sugi's dense character comes into play as their faithful encounter features him rejecting her when she casually asks him to torture her after she caught a glimpse of his results and he realized he was smart. Uesugi then offered her a second time by saying that Yasuki then offended her a second time by saying that she is too much and may get fat. The episode then continues with more faithful encounters. Firstly, by introducing Yasugi's background of being poor and needing a job. Yasugi then found a job to teach a rich person's daughter, or so he thought. The rich person was offering to pay five times the price which Yasugi thought was sketchy well. Of course, he'd think that, and it turns out to be as true as it can be. On the same faithful day, Itsuki Nanako was revealed to be the transfer student, and of course she would end up in Uesugi's class. Afterwards, our male protagonist then realized he fucked up, and then she was the transfer student that was one about to undergo his tutelage. Yes, that's a very generic way to develop an anime, not a bad way though. A offends B and the plot twist. A realizes he shouldn't have done that. This is the greatest chance for the character development and gives an anime direction depending on how the character approaches the problem. Continuing, Yosuke tries to get an opportunity to apologize to Itsuki. As he looks for an opportunity, we get introduced to the other girls hanging around Itsuki and Yosuke assume were her friends. A few of those girls approached Itsuki, which gave us a rough idea of their personality. Then he went to Itsuki's house to begin first day on the job, and that was when he realized his job isn't to tutor a rich man's daughter, it was to tutor a rich man's daughter, which were five. The episode then follows with a small series of fun service and snippets of our waifu's personalities. I mean, I have to say they all make perfect waifu material just by looks alone. We also learned that all the girls are failures in academics and the only thing they have in common other than being identical in looks is their hatred for studying. So from the episode 1 I drew some conclusions. It's okay for the girl to get to know our boy. If anime wants to be generic she will also be the last girl to get with our boy. Either dad or boy will get together with all the sister or even better. Probably a tsundere may be first uh, girl, best girl besides she's pretty hot. Wait, isn't that most of the girls? 
I like her cause I like Sundar anyway. She seems to be mature one among the rest, but little is known about the rest yet since I'm only at episode one. Ichika, second girl uh, to know our boy, seems a bit of a tease, but also seems to be the most forthcoming along with Nana Koyotsuba. By that I mean she's really is easy going with Uesugi and even teases him for having a thing for Itsuki. Yotsuba, the third girl introduced, immediately anyone can tell if they watch a lot of anime that she's the cheery, easygoing, ditzy girl which of the group we generally has a clumsy trait which I don't know if she has in this anime yet. She's the one that helped introduce the other sister when they rejected him as a tutor since she apparently bears a grudge now after Uesugi and after first encounter. Nino, very little information from episode 1, but seems to be at Sundare too. Maybe not as much as Itsuki, but I don't know yet. She dragged Uesugi on first day, talk about extreme. Baited him by giving him tasty cookies, but dragged the glass of water so that they didn't have to study the fuck, man. She's very pretty though, pretty edgy too. Who the fuck drugs their tutor? Afterwards, Itsuki was the one that takes Uesugi back, so you can pretty much tell who the main heroine in the first episode was. Still, for Nino, I still don't have much info about her yet, and I wouldn't want to draw any conclusions, apart from the fact that she drugged him, man. Miku, quiet, soft-spoken, seeming anti-social girl of the group, and according to my experience in anime, normally this is the one that gets the most love because anime fans don't want to be generic and like girls that clearly is the prettiest and the most generic waifu. She probably is the most different from the group since the rest seem to be very loud and sociable. My first impression of Miku is that I can tell she's one of your fans that will want to protect. Those are my feelings from episode one and I don't want to be wrong correct. It seems the anime has an episode by episode approach as I like to call it, meaning it features one character per arc, like one character being the focus for one or more episodes straight and changing to a new character afterwards, so on and so forth. A very typical approach for a harem anime with many characters. Either way, that's what I thought, but what particularly interested me was that many other harem anime that supposedly focuses one girl usually has that girl clearly shown to be the main heroine appearing in every arc, etc. Like Bunny Girl Senpai, we have Mei appearing in every girl's arc, but in, uh, in, the, in this anime, the girls have a pretty equal amount of airtime in each episode to allow us to understand all of them better, while giving more insight on the main heroine of the arc. West Sugi apparently does end up with one of the girls, according to teasers, but I mean it's also possible he marries all or something. To be honest, I like the fact that no one is left out giving viewers the chance to guess who ends up marrying Uesugi or letting viewers pick the best girl of their choice. After watching like the first episode and telling my friends I started watching this anime, I heard that many people like Miku which hopefully I will learn why. I mean currently my first impression made me fall for Itsuki first but it's sort of dedicated to Itsuki in the first episode. However the anime is still in, in introductory phase. As of now, episode 4, I realize that I like the anime even more because its approach is great. I said that each episode or two has a main heroine, but that very, very well may not be the case since the girls are getting a bit of airtime each. Sometimes two girls can be the main focus in one episode, sometimes all the girls. This makes it more casual and enjoyable to watch in my opinion, because each episode has a problem that arises with all the sisters having airtime. We get to see how each of them have their unique methods or approach problems and attempt to resolve them, allowing us to understand their characters and personality better. This, this then allows for further development 
of character backstory or personal affairs which ultimately will get revealed and potentially solved by our male lead. 